tell me whether you see it or not. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So then let's start. So today I want to highlight that something new coming in Go with this new version of 21 release, I believe, 1.21. And uh, yeah, you know that Go have like stable release cycle. Uh, each half of the year we have a new version and current support is shifted a little bit. So uh, Go 1.19 become deprecated and unsupported, not deprecated, but unsupported uh, even more. So no more security fixes goes there. And uh, yeah, it's like good opportunity to update your uh, build process and introduce a new version. So today we will discuss uh, overall how Go release cycle work and what has changed recently. What updates came in uh, coming in the language, in tools, in libraries, and uh, also I want to discuss with you some new recent tools that was introduced in this summer, as we haven't met for a while. <laughs> we have a lot of small topics to discuss. So release cycles looks like that. Uh, it was formed, I believe, since uh, 1.5 version. Uh, so when Go switch from C compiler to Go compile itself. So Go starts compiled by, by its own. Yeah, and they decided to provide this more predictable releases each half of the year. And you see that uh, the like window of four months is when you can make a contribution to, to the language, then start in code freeze and only fixes and patches allowed in that time, and then you version released. And it's like repeated each year. So right now we can expect that a new version coming sometimes in August and sometimes in February. Yeah, usually it's in the beginning of the month. So what has changed since uh, this current version 1.21 is that, uh, as I mentioned in the slides, you see, um, when Code Free started, uh, the main minor tag, minor version was released. Yes, if we, if we follow it like uh, semantic versioning, for example. And then each version, each release candidate candidate will be marked with RC with numbers. And only uh, first table version uh, will have like leading zero or patch version on it. Uh, it's like, uh, I believe, major difference uh, from the previous one because uh, previously mm, uh, this zero version was without that. Yeah, so the 1.20, it was like stable release version. And that was the difference when we referenced to it. And uh, all tool set will be adjusted according to these new, new rules. Actually, in this release, a lot of different rules uh, regarding backward and forward compatibility was introduced uh, and we will discuss it later. Yeah, and for example, that's how previous releases with better version looks like when they release better version before release candidates and before the stable version as well. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, you can ask me just for the reference. So I believe we can move forward. So what has changed in the language? Actually, I am very excited about this uh, new version because we finally we have like these two magic, as for me, magic function like min and max, uh, because usually you need to write it by your own. And it's a little bit noisy. Like, I can say that it's noisy and maybe I'm too lazy to write it down. It's very simple, but yeah, sometimes it's, you You have some thoughts why it doesn't present in the language. It's so obvious, etc. So yeah, now we have them and we can use them. And uh, I believe it's beneficial, become beneficial and possible to implement that after generics introduction. Yeah, so right now it's working with generics mostly. Uh, some normalization was, or uh, some specified rules, how package will be utilized in our program was added. So uh, right now you, the order, how package was like compiled and used, uh, defined, and it may be slightly changed uh, previously. Uh, and you know, when we're talking about backward compatibility, Go team states that they are not uh, cover situation when 
there is some bug or lack of specification and based on this, some behavior was built. So such ca cases doesn't support. And uh, yeah, they understand that some side effects may arise as well. So what could be affected could be affected uh, init function or their calls and uh, maybe maybe that's all. <laughs> I don't know, maybe some global variable in civilization as well. I haven't seen, think about it a lot. So be uh, careful with that when you're updating. Uh, I have tried to understand what mean this type inference, but I unfortunately I haven't like too much experience with generics. Uh, it's more related uh, on the arguments and parameters that was sent there and how they comply with the types and uh, specification and interfaces that uh, allowed. So they make this uh, more adjust and according to the spec and new errors may happen there if something wrong. So usually it's lead to some errors uh, in the runtime. Yeah, one more huge improvement, I believe it's how we trade over loop variables. It was announced a while. And right now we can switch between per iteration variable instead per loop. So by default, we still have per loop variable, um, but we can adjust it. Yeah. and. Uh, New rules of panicking by Gordon if uh, panics was implied with an empty value. So it's new runtime errors happens. Uh, I believe we can stick a little bit more with details. So that's how this new function min and max looks like. So they accept from one to three parameters. And so parameters means it's um, at least something yeah, or like uh, minimal value for that and that it works in different cases. I'm not sure that it's uh, uh, at least works for min function. So usually it's not happened. It's interesting that th this function working with min as well. And regarding clear, clear works for map and slices. So in map, it delete all the values, all the keys. Usually we use for this for each iteration. And now we can just call this function and for slices, it just uh, step to zero all values. So you have the length of the uh, slice the same. Mm, about loop variable, it's like example when we have uh, some, uh, you see, we can run this uh, test in parallel and pass in a use variable, like this is condition, to verify it's odd or even. Uh, yeah, and when we run this test, it all will use like, it all will work only with late, uh, re like latest uh, values in the test cases. It's because this uh, closure, we cannot like provide this value as argument to that. And for fixing that, we may use um, this global like environment variable, go experiment and loop var. It, it, it changed the meaning of the um, value of the this variable for each iteration. So it's uh, work more precisely. And this also can lead to the bug and uh, you should be aware that you should use this variable all the time. So if you compile with that, it's also necessary. Um, about tooling, yeah. So a lot of uh, things happen there. So they have used Go debug for a while, I believe, since uh, 1.5 at least. I haven't remembered this story. So there are a lot of different options that you may put there and switch the behavior. Uh, tools will um, look to the Go mod or Go work files and notice which version of Go was used for this model for compile and adjust according to that and use default val values for previous version as well to not like break the compatibility. Uh, so again, you can look in, I will provide the reference after in the final slides. So you can go and look which version, which variables you can use and for what, for example. Uh, 
um, yeah, during the compile time. So for compiler we, right now, we can use, or right now it will be used automatically. So by default, uh, profiling guided uh, profiling guided optimization is used by default. It was introduced in previous version 1.12k. And right now it uh, turned on automatically, but it's required to have profile in the main directory for that. Um, I'm not sure that uh, whether you're familiar with the, such kind of the optimization. It could bring you like uh, four or seven percent of optimization. It requires to you to provide a CPU profile uh, file, uh, and yeah, of course, uh, this profile should be built based on the production environment and real behavior. So you should capture as much as possible different use cases of your program is functioning. That's uh, help a uh, compiler to optimize uh, some things. For example, some uh, functions that uh, use it very widely or something like that. Um, new go, go test options. So now we will have this full pass uh, flag. It's allow to add the full pass of the files instead of the only name of file. It's helped to uh, figure out in which places we have uh, fault. I believe it's uh, bring some more clarity. Uh, as well, we can uh, compile at once multiple uh, packages and provide the folder where this uh, compilation will be stored as well. Uh, I believe that's not the full list of the changes, but I try to pick the most meaningful from my point of view. Um, another major, as for me, updates, and uh, I believe it's pretty huge again, it's introduced new packages. So at least uh, four, maybe five of them, uh, because there are an additional package for S-log for testing. It's placed in the testing um, group. Okay, so Go team introduced uh, their solution for uh, structured login. Uh, they um, analyze existing uh, solutions for that and uh, pick the ZAP logger as like uh, something between uh, light and robust API and efficient performance as well. So they also consider it uh, zero work uh, there, but they see some potential potential bugs when you're using zero zero log because they uh, using buffers not not, not the buffers they use um, how we call it in Steam package uh, when when you uh, not initialize new object and you put it in a container and retrieve from there. Pool. Yeah, sync pool. So they're using sync pool, and that may lead to some issues uh, during the execution when you use the attribute. Okay, uh, about this log a little bit later. So slice, again, it's based uh, on the generics and provide us uh, rich functionality that's help us spread with the slice, uh, like compare slides, uh, sort, like uh, looking something in the slides, etc. So. It, it's great, I believe it's huge API. Um, I also have slides for that. I believe we can move forward and discuss it, all of them. So logger, it's pretty, like right now it has uh, defined levels of login. We can define different handle. Handler is like uh, backend for the login. We can use JSON or text or implement our own handler for that. And uh, we can uh, use different approaches I have shown mostly um, the version like uh, uh, Logros API, but it also supply, uh, support more sophisticated, more um, effect, uh, effective API with log attributes. So when you define each types and that's lead to their location and that's lead that uh, impact of the login in your application will be minimized. I mean, performance. Okay, um, very small, we can play with that. <laughs> so, and uh, recently we have uh, released a couple of videos from the GoForCon EU and GoForCon UK and 
there is a guy who presented this uh, as log package and how they um, develop it and how they optimize it. Very interesting. Uh, that's, I believe, all API of slice package. So we see the binary search see here. Um, flip our us to truncate uh, uh, the slice to remove unnecessary uh, like empty spaces from it. Again, compact remove duplicates, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of nice functionalities that should work much more faster than uh, reflect package because before that we should use deep equal to compare slices and maps. And now we have uh, like separate package for that. Uh, map package, as you see, uh, is much more uh, shorter. So um, I'm also curious why we don't have such functionality like in slice that's help us to uh, validate whether we have element in map or not. But yeah, we, we have our operation just with awk notation when we obtain this um, value from the map. So it's uh, like already there. And uh, compare package pretty small. I believe it was introduced just before because it used it in map and uh, slice packages only for that reason. About minor changes in the other packages. Uh, so, uh, okay, there are a bunch of them. Yeah, so <laughs> you can read all of them and Mostly they're related to some cryptographic uh, functionality. Um, also some updates in the net, net HTTP package, and many, many others. Uh, what I have highlighted is that right now we have a uh, new functionality in context. Right now we can create context without cancellation. <laughs> I tried to notice that. We have with cancellation, now it's without and introduce uh, deadline in timeout cows, and we can uh, add uh, definition of execution after func. So the functions that will be executed after deadlines, timeout, or cancel the bridge. So very interesting. Errors, new error was introduced. It already supported on the HTTP as well, so they have their own error for that. Um, I'm not sure whether they name in the same way. I believe there are some different, like no implemented or something like that. Um, but it's mapped and uh, operation is returns through when you validate and compare this error. A new flag was introduced. It's just flag without the value. So you just uh, can use it to declare some flag without like adding any values. And it will be treated as true. Without the flag, it will be false and couple types uh, satisfy this flag as well. Uh, new metrics become available in the runtime. So right now we can track uh, live heap size. Also a value of uh, GC uh, percent and uh, GC or go uh, max heap parameters that could be provided through the environment variable. A new function in a sync package yeah, and many answers, of course. So I haven't mentioned all of them. So I encourage you to go there and uh, revise all <laughs> news and changes in the libraries. It could be very helpful for you. Uh, some recent tools that I want to discuss. This summer was introducing the tool Go New. Uh, I believe many of you face it with this question when you set up in a new project, you want to reuse your experience in some way, or at least define uh, which packages you want to use. And right now it's uh, experimenting uh, solution like experimenting tool and uh, go, go team are asking to use it in different ways and provide the feedbacks, which feature are, are needed and required. And then they will be thinking about how to uh, incorporate this new tool in a like standard uh, tool set. Um, first two templates are available from the tool and uh, for next uh, was suggested from one of the repositories. It's not very popular right now, so but you can at least look at them and define your own. And I believe that uh, could help you if 
if you're working with set up a new project like in a regular basis for example each month you need to step in new services it could help another very available tool is go well check mm, it was introduced i believe since september and this summer it's become like uh, or obtained like version one so it was uh, declared a stable release and now it's ready for production to use different uh, code base and database for validating security issue in a code in your dependency and could analyze uh, as static code as binary so could be applied in different ways and very recommended to use it in your like uh, CICD process um yeah, I believe that's it. All I want to share, by the way, about Google New, I'm not sure that there are some presentation, but about Google Check, uh, Google team participate in different conferences and Google I.O., Google Next, and I believe many others technical conference. So this source, uh, this tool may be used not only for Go code, so it also cover like different uh, languages different platforms yeah so about this tool you see many of the reference from go dev sites so they have a bunch of good blog posts that explain a lot about go debug uh, performance guided optimization go and check go new and yes yeah, some additional uh, page about go release cycle so on that, I can thank you for your attention. Maybe you have some question to me or propositions that we can discuss. Yeah, thank you, Ivan, guys. Uh, please don't hesitate to unmute and ask or use chat. Yeah, I know we haven't chat for a while, but maybe you have some questions. <laughs>